Hi guys, here is the video going over 3.1 exponential functions day one. So after this video, you should be able to solve exponential equations using the one-to-one -one property. So first and foremost, what is the one-to-one -one property? So the one-to-one -one property states that um, for a is greater than zero and a cannot be one, then, I'm gonna highlight this, a to the x equals a to the y if and only if x equals y. So it makes sense. So if I'm looking at over here, we have the same bases, right? So I have a and a, and if my bases are the same and my equations are equal, or my sides are equal to each other, it makes sense that x should equal y, okay? That is what the one-to-one -one property um, is stating. So what you want to do is you want to use the one-to-one -one property to solve each equation. And in order to do that, your bases need to be the same. Oh, didn't mean to do that. So right here, my base is a two. On this side, my base is a four. So what I want to do is I want to make it so that the bases are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and change my base of four in terms of two. So here's what that looks like. So I have two to the X on this side equals, and I want to ask myself, how can I change 4 in terms of 2's? Well, 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. And then I still have my x plus 1 on the outside. Now, if you look at what you have, you are raising a power to a power. So digging deep into your brains, you need to remember your exponent rules. Whenever I raise a power to a power, I need to multiply them. So essentially what I have is I have 2 to the x equals 2 to the 2 times x plus 1 because I'm multiplying my exponents together. I can go ahead and distribute this 2 into the parentheses. So I have 2 to the x equals 2 to the 2x plus 2. Make sure you distribute completely. And now that my bases are the same, they're both broken down to, broken down to 2, I can focus on my exponents. And the one-to-one -one property states that since my bases are the same, my exponents should be equal to each other. So I'm going to write this as x equals 2x plus 2. And now I'm just left with an equation to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and get my variables on the same side. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. It's 1x minus 2x is negative 1x equals positive 2. Divide both sides by negative 1. And x equals negative 2. All right, let's do another one. For this one, I have 3 to the x squared equals 9 to the negative 5x plus 12. Again, I want to break apart um, my 9 so that it is in terms of 3s. So I'm going to leave my 3 alone because 3 can't really break apart anyway. But my 9 can be broken apart to 3 to some exponent, which in this case is 3 to the second power. And then my exponent on the outside is 5x plus 12. Once again, when you raise a power to a power, you can multiply your exponents. Whoops. So I have 3 to the x squared equals 3 to the 2 times negative 5x plus 12. And then, of course, we can distribute the 2 into the parentheses. So I have 3 to the x squared equals 3 to the negative 10x plus 24. So don't forget to distribute completely. And once again, now that my bases are the same, I can just focus on my exponents. And I'm going to set them equal to each other because of the one-to-one -one property. So I have x squared equals negative 10x plus 24. Now this one is a quadratic equation instead of a linear equation. So for quadratic equations, you have a couple options. You can solve by factoring or you can solve using the quadratic formula. I am a big fan of factoring because it is much easier. Um, so hopefully this one's factorable. So in order to solve by factoring, I need to get it equal to zero. I wanna keep my x squared positive um, to make it easier to factor. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 10x to both sides. I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides. 
That way I can get everything on one side. So on my right side I have zero, on my left I have x squared plus 10x minus 24. Now I want to factor, I want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to 10. That is, let's set up my double bubbles first, uh, 12 and 2. And then my 12 needs to be positive, 2 is negative. So I'm going to solve this um, by setting my factors equal to 0. So I have x plus 12 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. So my first possible solution for x is negative 12, and my second possible solution for x is positive 2. All right, let's do another one. This is our last one, by the way. <laughs> um, so if I look at letter C, I have 25 and um, 1 over 125. So 25 and 1 over 125. So 125, I can't actually break that number apart in terms of 25 to some power. Um, but what I can do is I can break it apart to 25 times 5, and then 25 is 5 and 5. So if you'll notice, when I break it down completely, I have everything in terms of fives. And I can do the same thing for the 25. 25 is five and five. So for this particular example, I am breaking apart both sides to get a Aaron base Barnes, of please five. Come to the front office. Aaron Barnes, please come to the front office. Sorry about that interruption. Um, so I have five squared to the x plus 1. You know, I thought to myself, maybe I should make this video at home just in case there are going to be random announcements. And then I was like, no, it's after school. There's no way there's going to be other announcements. And sure enough, there it is. Okay, sorry about my rambling. Um, so I have 1 over 5 cubed. Okay. So now if I look at my bases, I have 5 squared and I have 1 over 5 cubed. So on one side I have 5, the other side I have 1 over 5. So in order to get rid of that fraction, what we need to incorporate is a negative exponent. So if I take this and make it 5 to the negative 3, um, that is going to create the same base as 5. So anytime you have 1 over something, you can go ahead and take that exponent and make it negative, and that'll get rid of the fraction. Okay, so again, I am raising a power to a power, so I'm going to multiply my exponents. So I have 5 to the 2 times x plus 1 equals 5 to the negative 3 times x minus 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and distribute, distribute, and of course, since my bases are the same, I can go ahead and just focus on my exponents. So I'm going to rewrite my equation over here. When I distribute the 2, that gives me 2x plus 2. And then I'm going to distribute the negative 3, so that gives me negative 3x uh, plus 12. I'm distributing a negative 3. Now I'm going to solve for x, so I'm going to get my x's on the same side, so I'm going to add 3x to both sides. That gives me 5x plus 2 equals 12. Subtract 2 from both sides, so I get 5x equals 10, so x equals 2. All right, so that is everything you need to know about the one-to-one -one property for exponential equations.